Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you more about the sodium borohydride reduction. Uh, in the last video, I introduced you to sodium borohydride as a reagent that can convert carbonyl compounds into alcohols through the hydride transfer process. No. Here's sodium borohydride. <coughs> And as I mentioned in that video, sodium borohydride as a reaction is usually done in uh, an alcohol solvent. It can actually even be done in water, though uh, many of the organic compounds that you would react with are not soluble in water. And this reaction uh, is classified as a reduction. Uh, the carbon atom is being reduced. The oxygen atom is also being reduced. So... Um, if we were to look at, and go through uh, trying to assign the oxidation numbers to the carbon in the carbonyl group and the oxygen in the carbonyl group, uh, we could, could see that this is an, uh, a reduction. So I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to give you an easier way to recognize a reduction in organic chemistry. Carbon oxygen and then a reactant, or actually, we're going to do ketone and we're going to do alcohol. So we're just looking, we're not, we're, we're very clear about what we're, we're talking about here. Okay. So the oxidation number of carbon in the ketone, uh, one way to estimate, or one way to determine oxidation number uh, is to, to go through and rigorously kind of calculate all of the oxidation states and um, various things using methods that you learn about in general chemistry. Um, another way is to consider that, is to just look at the bonds in a covalent compound. For each bond to a more electronegative atom, the oxidation state goes up by one. For each bond to a less electronegative atom, the oxidation state goes down by one. And for each bond to the same type of, of, of element, you get uh, no change. So the carbon at no influence from the other carbons, but plus two because we have uh, two bonds to oxygen. In the ketone, the oxygen is minus two, and it shouldn't surprise you that these two uh, numbers are the same uh, or, or opposite signs because ultimately the oxidation states of all of the atoms in a structure need to add up to zero. In the alcohol, I have carbon, 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 hydrogen, carbon, oxygen. So we have one bond to a more electronegative atom that would bring it up to plus one, one bond to a less electronegative atom down from plus one to zero. So oxidation number for carbon in the alcohol is zero. Hydrogen, or I'm sorry, for oxygen, we have one bond to something less electronegative, uh, oxid, hydrogen, and another bond for something less electronegative, hydrogen. So actually, I was wrong at the, earlier in the video when I said that oxygen was changing as well. Oxygen is still minus two. Um, but because we added two hydrogens, and the hydrogens are both plus one, it's what now balances out the, the oxygen. Another way to recognize uh, whether a reduction is happening in organic chemistry is you're adding, you're gonna be adding H2 or adding two hydrogens across a bond. Or in general, adding hydrogen to a molecule in most cases is considered a reduction because hydrogen is less electronegative than carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and the other common elements in organic chemistry. I want to take a moment and just reiterate the mechanism of this reaction. Even though I uh, showed that mechanism in the previous video, I want to make an important uh, 
it's just good to rem have a, a second look at this mechanism. So again, we have a nucleophilic attack from one of the boron hydrogen bonds delivers a uh, hydride equivalent that generates our alkoxide anion. H, ooh, not gallium, H, oxygen, anion. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do this again is because in the reaction that I showed uh, here, I have uh, not, I'm not using the, uh, or did not show the addition of water or acid or any other aqueous proton source. Uh, there are some folks out there that consider uh, the alcohol solvent that this reaction runs in a sufficient proton source for this reaction. And then there are some who will propose a much more complicated reaction because in fact the, the borohydride anion has multiple hydrides that it can donate. Uh, and as it donates them, it tends to generate something that's electrophilic that, that ends up attaching to the oxygens. And you do need water and acid to chew up that uh, boronate anion that forms. Uh, but this react, this mechanism, or, or the one in the previous video using the acidic workup, is sufficient for most cases. I want to spend the rest of this video talking about something called the reaction. Oh, wrong, 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 uh, wrong option there. Reaction scope. Or the reaction scope is what will sodium borohydride do to what kind of functional groups and what are the outcomes? Uh, primarily, sodium borohydride reacts with aldehydes and ketones. Uh, there are a couple of other carbonyl functional groups and other functional groups that it will react with, but primarily we're looking at reaction with aldehydes and ketones. It's not going to react with other kinds of carbonyl functional groups. Okay. So uh, let's just do some specific examples now of what happens with an aldehyde, say. Sodium borohydride, alcohol solvent. Uh, and this, this reaction can be done in ethanol or other alcohols, honestly, just depending on what your aldehyde or ketone may be soluble in, what you have around, what's inexpensive. So this reaction converts aldehydes into primary alcohols. And this reaction is pretty general for most aldehydes. Whatever alkyl or, or hydrocarbon group is on the other side of the aldehyde, uh, that's preserved. Sodium borohydride reacts with very few other uh, reagent or, or very few other groups. Uh, if you're thinking I've seen that reagent before, actually, yes, you have. Uh, it's the reducing agent used in the demercuriation step of oxymercuriation. Uh, but there's no mercury here, so we don't want to get too hung up on that. Okay, any generic aldehyde is going to react to sodium borohydride to make a primary alcohol. Let's, let's make a specific ketone or a different ketone, at least I've been using acetone. As an example, sodium borohydride reacts with ketones as well. Um, if you go on organic chemistry, you'll note that aldehydes and ketones are usually considered different functional groups, but in almost all cases, they have uh, they are capable of exactly the same reactions. And we get a secondary alcohol out of this reaction. And uh, Let's just do this generically. Uh, use R and we use R prime because these two, these two hydrocarbon groups on either side of the ketone don't need to be the same hydrocarbon. They can be, but they don't need to be. Oh, 
you get your secondary alcohol. Note that because this reaction puts a hydrogen on that position, there is no way for us to make tertiary alcohols by this method. Uh, because tertiary alcohol would have no carbon hydrogen bond. And then just briefly, uh, we want to mention that sodium boral hydride does not react with esters. I did not bring my not bring my, my arrow here. And generally no reaction. Or you will sometimes see chemists abbreviate no reaction with the word with the two letters N R for no reaction. Uh, and likewise, sodium boral hydride does not react with carboxylic acids. Woo! What just happened there. Oh. Or does not react with carboxylic acids. Here we have sodium boral hydride. Now, actually, let's scoot this back up so you see aldehydes, primary alcohols, ketones, secondary alcohol. No reaction with basically most other carbonyl functional groups. The next video, I'm going to introduce you to lithium aluminum hydride and explain how it's different. Thank you for watching.